Right, I stopped for a break, thought I'd do my intro whilst I'm here. Welcome to the back to another episode of Gin's Gone Walkabout. I'm Kai, and today I'm out in Somerset. Behind me is Bristol, and yeah, the location I'm going to, I don't know exactly where it is, I don't know the exact whereabouts, like where the layout of the land or anything like that. All I know is it, it's a woodland. I've marked it down on uh, my maps. I noticed by Google Earth there's water and everything there. There's like three possible water sources. So I thought, hey, why not go out this weekend and go explore it and see what it's like? So I'll bring you along and you get to experience it like I get to experience it, but by watching. So thank you for clicking on. I hope you enjoyed this. Let's get on. And um, before I quickly carry on, if anyone knows me and knows second Land Rover, you'll understand why I needed a break. It is a sod to walk up without gear, but even when I got a 100 litre bear gun that's loaded, oh my god, killer is not the word. But let's get on with this. Oh, yeah, I'm just hiking down a random, well, say random, I know it's what road it is. I don't know the name of it, that's what I meant. But yeah, just hiking down like, to get to a turn off where I can cut across country. And yeah, basically, I've covered about a mile and a half, two miles so far. Like, in the space of about an hour. So, not too bad, because you know, I stopped. I had a bit of a coffee, finished my fag, and the rest of it. But I can see my next spot where I plan on resting. It's been about, I'd say about 35 minutes since I last like, seen you and that. So I'm getting close, closer. Once I get to my next location, I'm gonna take a reference point uh, figure out which bearings it is. I know from my next rest point, I gotta go south east east to get to the location. And that's in a straight line, but I ain't got wings. So I can't go as a crow flies. I gotta go how Jin's walks about. So, yeah, it might be a bit fun, shall we say. But, yeah, it's all fun. You're out. I made it to Maisonal uh, Hill Fort thing. That's, that's that massive mound behind me. I stopped for a fag coffee and something to eat. I got some biscuit moments, chocolate, and basically pancakes and chocolate. I love these bad boys. They are the one. But yeah, I'm gonna finish it. Like finish me fag. Have me food and my coffee which I got there and then I'm going to be travelling literally in that direction behind me which funny enough is uh, south east east so yes not long not long little update on my situation I have no idea where the fuck I am Literally, I have no idea. I've never walked through here before or anything. But the problem is about Somerset, it pretty much looks the fucking same. Everywhere you go is just fields and bush lines, fields and bush lines pretty much. So I could be fucking anywhere. But all I know is, is I'm heading in the right direction. I have got Google Maps on my phone. Like, so I'm not here without a camera, like a map, I mean. But I like to test myself. And I'm heading in the right direction. And yeah, earlier in the video I said south, east, east. There's a mistake on my part. It's actually meant to be said as east, south, east. 
So there we go. I corrected myself. So bam, but I'm heading in the right direction. I'm going to head that way. So I'm going to try and get through that fence line there and then keep moving. So yeah, bring it back in a bit later, I think. Yeah, it's been a fair while since I seen you last. Basically, I find a bridge to sit under so I can have a fag and a brew. If anyone has seen me, they'd probably think I was some bloody homeless bloke that lives under a bridge. Oh, hey. It's nice and flat. There's fire material. Not really windy down there. I don't see it too bad. There's plenty of wild edibles there. Fire starter there. That's white birch. There is plenty of stuff. Just got to know what you're doing and what you're looking for. So, yeah, I'm just going to enjoy my fag and everything else. The time's now 5 to 2. I left at 20 to 11, I think it was. So, I've been walking a fair bit. I've covered a lot of distance. Not all in the direction I wanted to go because for some reason in Somerset everyone just seems to own cows. Now I'm not scared of cows in any way shape or form but they got this thing called herd mentality and like yeah herd mentality I ain't getting bloody stampled like just because one cow decides it wants to run over and see me and that is the problem with cows they got what, like a herd mentality. Like, one or two cows is sang by themselves, they normally just walk over and give them a smooth or whatever, and they off and leave you alone. But when you've got a huge, like a big herd, like what I find, they all start running at you. I don't like it when a lot of big things come charging at me for no reason. So, yeah, I just detoured around things, and it's taken me a lot longer than I was expecting, but I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying this hike. This is all you fucking drivers. If you go past someone in a country lane and they're like on foot or whatever and they get out your way and you don't thank them or whatever or you at least raise a hand, give them a nod, you are an arrogant fucking wank shaft as far as I'm concerned. Like, I ain't got to stop and get off the road. Like, I could just fucking walk down it, make you stop and wait for them to be clear. But no, being polite, I step off to the side. Is it too much to ask for, just for a little bit of acknowledgement, just to say thank you? Because I'm getting to the point where a lot of you can fuck off. And you can bloody wait behind me. Or wait in front of me or whatever until it's clear. I'd be nice by stepping off to the fucking side. How hard is it just to raise a couple of fingers when you're on a fucking, when your hand's on a pissing steering wheel? Or give a little nod? Like, we'll find out if this driver does it as well, and you'll see what I'm on about. Right? That driver's courteous. He just put his hand up, now we got another one, we'll see again. Now we've got an arrogant fucking posh slag. Who thinks they're the fucking, because they pay a bit of road tax, they think they're the fucking dons. And thank you. Arrogant cunt, arrogant cunt. Never arrogant cunt. And you see why people get fucked off of it. Like, I just stood there and just wasted, it might have only been like a fucking 30 seconds of my time. But you think, if I do that 10 times, that is 3 minutes extra onto my fucking time. Like, it is not hard to give people a little bit of fucking acknowledgement. That is the problem with people these days. Every fucking cunt like, expects people to be nice and fucking do things for them, like, but they can't even just show a little bit of fucking decency and acknowledgement to people, like, and they wonder why the world's going to fucking shit. But yeah, that's my little rant over, sorry about that, but it just pisses me off. People just need to be a bit more fucking courteous and a bit more kinder to each other. Like, like I said, it ain't fucking rocket science, like, what's your old steel or just a... Like, safe man? Like, how fucking hard is that? 
but apparently these posh wankers out in the countryside can't even fucking manage that. Assholes. Right. Basically, people, I ain't gonna lie, this bit of road's like fucking death, so I'm literally... I am full on, like, running down the road with a 100 litre Bergen on, trying to get to each spot. That's just enough for cars to get past. Like, swear to God, this is like death. This is really... And obviously, you always walk on the outside of the bend, hoping that people will see you. But, from my experience out here, they're not very noticeable people. I nearly got murked loads of times. Nearly got murked loads of times. I got another point where I can get in, there's a truck and that coming down. This is like death strip. I got a couple more motors coming down. There hasn't been a clean way into the fields either side of the road. It's all like horror bushes. I'll move it, make a little advancement. Not by much, there's another motor. Right. And now we're off again. Off to the next section. I just try not to get killed in the process. Oh, motor. Whew. What can I say? This video has been going about two minutes now, and I've been doing this for the past. What? 10? Yeah, about 10 minutes. Oh, right. When I get off Death Strip, I'll bring you back. Right, I made it out of Death Alley or Death Strip or whatever that god awful place was. I made great time because obviously I spent pretty much the whole about a mile, mile and a half, running. Pretty much for my life, you might as well say, to a degree. Uh, bad news, I am fucking hanging now. I was all right until I, I ran like a mile and a half. Oh, that killed me. That killed me. I got to strip off layers because I am sweating profusely. I have got extra layers and everything else on. Uh, not on in my bag and shite I'm trying to set you up I'm literally stopped at the side of a road I'm getting some funny looks trying to set up a tripod here <laughs> but what can I say I am absolutely beat oh. Basically, I'm basically on the last stretch of road to me and my destination. Uh, I think it's about another mile and a half, two miles to it, possibly more. I'm on my last dribs of coffee. I have got a flask of hot water on to make one on the go because I'm not an idiot. But I'm going to stop here, cool down, have a drink, and then I'm going to be off. I'll bring you back in a bit. I'm buzzing. Here, yeah, try and get you a better light. In. Yeah, there you go. Right. After all that shit running through Death Alley and everything else, right, it's five to three, and I'm in a mile of my location. Like, you don't understand how happy that makes me. Like, to know that I survived Death Alley until Sunday, because i got to go back through there. Um, <laughs> like, but 
I am buzzing. One mile left. I have been hiking for what? Like nearly four and a half hours, pretty much. Like buzzing. You don't understand. Buzzing. I'm getting there slowly. The hike's been really good. The running wasn't. I can't believe I actually had to run a mile and a half with a bloody bear gun on. With a bloody bear. And not exactly a small bear gun. Like, it's a hundred litres. Fully fucking loaded and all. Like, the only person I've ever run a mile for with this pack on was my little boy. Like, he's epileptic. And on uh, Christmas Day, I was out camping before I started all this YouTube and shenanigans. And, yeah, he had a fit. I had to go into hospital, obviously. I was glamping because it was Christmas Day. And, yeah, obviously, say no more. Stuff was in the pack. Pack was on. Like, I didn't even have a chance to have a morning fag or a coffee like I normally do. And, yeah, that was it, mate. Cross-country running. Fully loaded bear gun. Just got to go boss mode sometimes and just do what you got to do. Right, I found this random bench and basically a country lane, literally. There's the road. I got to walk down, I got to go off down that way. But yeah, it's just a random bench in the middle of nowhere. I decided to take the opportunity to make myself a fag and a brewski on the roadside, ready for the walk. I put this back on because it's got a little bit chillier. Like now I've cooled down where I've had a run for the past, like God knows how long, which I am very appreciated of. But I cannot say that is not a blessing. Not having to run is also. But there's loads of these beautiful. If I try to turn you a little bit. Daffodils, I think they're called. I try to stand you up without dropping you up. But yeah, I'm going to carry on now. I probably got close to about three quarters of a mile. So not really that far in all essence. So I'll bring you back in a minute. Have a good one. I am literally starting to close in on my destination, I think. Basically, I am in the middle of absolute nowhere. Literally. As far as you can see, there is no city. Like, if something happens to me out here, I'm going to have to find grid references and grid, like, longitude and latitudes to send to the medic teams if anything does happen. Like, touch wood, nothing does happen, but there's that chance I am on a road. Like, as you can see, but I am literally in the absolute middle of nowhere. But people out here seem to be a lot more courteous shall we say compared to the assholes that I left back in the other clip these people like they all seem to all of them pretty much give the like hand signal a little nod like both or whatever but they seem to acknowledge you and thank you for letting them pass because the track I'm on is not big like, it's literally big enough for one motor. Like, there's a few passing points for motors. But literally, like, this is, like, what I'm doing. I've walked absolute miles. Like, so far, I'd easily say, good. Eight miles, possibly more, maybe a bit less. I don't know. But I have walked far as hell. I'm looking forward to setting up my hammock. Because yes, that is what I'm doing this weekend, people. I am hammocking. Right. Obviously, I on a wander still. Right, on my way. But I have found... A load of primrose. Now, these bad boys are edible. Some of them ain't in the best condition. So I'm going to pick the nicer ones out of the group. Simply because this would be a little summer to chuck 
into our burger for later. Wait there, let this vehicle go fast. But yeah, wild primrose. A pretty little flower. Tastes quite nice to be fair. But I'll come over here, there's some more. quite a fair few around there so yeah I'm gonna gather some more of this put it in my pouch and then I'll be off right I've made it to the desired location like the woodland I picked I'm not 100% sure whose land this even is or anything so I'm being a little bit cautious if I bumps into anyone, I'll explain what I'm doing or whatever. If they ask me to leave, I'll leave. But in all fairness, I sat around for a couple of minutes. I haven't heard not one footstep. So, I, I'm hoping that I don't get disturbed and moved on. But obviously there is all possibilities of that. But, I don't recommend people do what I do. Like, me personally, i got zero fucks for the law. Like really don't respect any of them, I don't care about the politics, they're all assholes. Sorry to bring that into the video, but just that would be sad. But I live by my own laws of life. I leave no trace, I don't see the problem. But it ain't like I leave a mess, so... I honestly don't see what people's problem would be for me to wild camp on their land. Because they wouldn't even know I'd been there if they didn't see me. Just one of those things. Pretty much, I'll be honest, near enough all landowners that's met me and that's seen what I do and the fact I leave no trace, I've shown the pictures on my Instagram and everything else, they generally tend to be quite sound with it. But I'm heading downhill simply because I know, well, according to the maps, there's a water source down there. So it's only smart to walk down to the water source. No, I thought I could hear something, but it's not. There's me lead catching on the uh, thing, so I've got to plug my phone in on charge with my battery bank in my pocket. But, yeah, I know there's, a, there's meant to be a water source down there. I've got some water with me. If not, I know it's back along the route where there's some water that ain't too far from there anyway. But, we can always just hope. When I find a water source, I'll bring you back. Right. It's now 20 to 5, I've been walking around for ages to be honest, trying to find a suitable location. That woodland behind me, uh, the spring, like the source of the water source is there, but there's no suitable places to camp because basically there's so much fucking dead pool. That side of the stream, the woodland's massive compared to the other one that I'm about to check out, and the one I just went in. But all the trees are really skinny and couldn't support a hammock. Well, I don't. I'd rather not take the risk and end up falling out and dirt myself. So, I'm walking down to that pine woodland there. You know, so I've got somewhere to string a hammock. If not, I'm just going to cut a long enough, like a four foot stick, and I'm going to be out there in the tarp tent. But I'm hoping I can use my hammock to be honest. I enjoy my hammock, it's nice. I'll bring you all back in a bit when I find a spot. I don't have a clue what the name of this woodland is, but I'm gonna call it Paradise because it is absolutely beautiful. Like, absolutely beautiful. I swear to God, running a one and a half miles down Death Alley was worth every bit of it. This place is absolutely breathtaking. I don't even feel like I'm in like England anymore. Like this is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This is this is breathtaking. Like, this is absolutely amazing. But I'm gonna press on. I'll see you all in a bit. Yeah, got me twig stove going now. I can't be bothered to go around traipsing around getting loads and loads of firewood just for a couple of hours. 
So I'm just going to sit by this for those couple of hours, still having a little fire. I will be honest, I made a load of uh, basically fat wood curls, like feathers type things, but took them off the stick so I could save the fat, more fat wood for tomorrow. I don't know if it's starting to rain, I hope not. But yeah, I just knackered to be fair after the miles of walking there. At the time now is 25 past 6, like, I'm wrecked. I was like, if it went like fucking, like, half past 6, it was 25 past 6. I'd all fair enough, I'd be ready to call it a night. I've had to put my torch on, because, like, on the phone, simply because otherwise you wouldn't see me. I've got my... Right, if you can see that. My hammock and that's all behind me with the thing open. Which I can always pull down and stake in. But I'm just enjoying my little twig stove at the moment. It's absolutely lovely. And these new boots, they are awesome. Don't get me wrong, my feet are hurting, but after the distance I walked, I'm not surprised my feet are hurting. It's not the distance that was the problem. Is how much weight I had to carry, plus I had to run the one and a half of eight miles to get here because I walked into Death Alley. Oh, we're gonna do that. So, yeah, when I do something else or if anything else happens, I'll bring you back. But other than that, I'm just gonna be sat here for a while enjoying this. And these little twig stews are so underrated. Like, for ages. Like, I... Yeah, I just laughed at, at the thought of actually having a twig stew. But, when you can't be bothered to light a huge fire, or go around collecting loads and loads of wood for a huge fire, this is the way to go. 100% the way to go. Right, sorry about it wobbling, you propped up on my knee. Tonight is Uncle Ben's uh, whole grain egg fried rice. I've already boiled it in the bag. Like, I got it sideways like this, even though there's a tear at the top, like a tear top, is because it makes it easier to actually eat from like this. Yes, this is not your standard bushcraft knife, but I find these crambits are actually really good for collecting edibles, like because where it's got that hook, it's easier to, yeah, and for things like this. Yeah, can you see that? Oh, crambits, not only good for fighting, bushcraft as well. If you want to say bushcraft or whatever, but I personally call it woodsman skills. Yeah, crambit. Ah, very good, very good. But this is my dinner for tonight because I was going to do burgers, but it's fucking. I really can't be asked. Really, really can't be asked. I just thought I'd do a couple of bites on camera. I ain't even got a fire going. I just got well proper fire, I'm just using my twig stove. Mm. Some rice. Pretty nice to be fair. I bring you all back in a bit once I've eaten this and that. Alright everyone. I brought you back, it's about five past nine and this is my beverage for tonight. My new favourite beer from the other day. The banana bread beer. Mmm, lovely. I'm going to make a fag to go with it. But this is literally the only beer I brought with me for the weekend. I didn't really want to bring more. I don't really know the woodland that I'm in really well. And I just thought I'd just get one just to enjoy on a Friday. I don't really drink that much. But I'm quite fond of this drink. So, other than that, I did get a fire going because... 
Yeah, basically, temperature dropped right down. Started to get pretty fucking cold. So, I made a quick fire just to keep me warm for the next hour. Ain't nothing major. So, yeah, I'll see you all later. Right, everyone. It is Friday night. The time is... I think that's 10 to 12. I double check for you. Yeah, 10 to 12. I didn't even realise it was that late myself. I only thought it was about fucking half past 10. The beer went down lovely. I had a nice little fire. Now I'm just letting my sleeping bag in my hammock. Getting ready to call it a night. If anything happens, I'll bring you back. If not, I'll see you in the morning. Night, everyone. Good morning. It's now Saturday. The time is 7 o'clock. <clears throat> well, what can I say? I slept like a brick all night. Literally, like a brick. Literally, just like so that. That is my view. I kept the tarp over so I could see out this morning. Pretty beautiful thing to wake up to. Pretty beautiful thing to wake up to. Yeah. Once I've had a roll up and that, I'll get a little fire going and get a coffee and everything on, and I'll bring you back now. Just so people are a bit more aware, last night I somehow broke my tripod. So I've resorted to what I did in my first uh, video, stick and cordage. Jobs are good, and I got my bush, uh, my twig stove going down there. I already made a coffee. I got a fog. The coffee's there. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy this, and then I'll get an actual fire going again here. This is where I had it last night. I didn't actually plan on having a fire last night. To be honest, it wasn't meant to get that cold, but the temperature dropped right off. I started to freeze my testes off, so bam, I made a fire. Now, I didn't do anything special, literally, I just made a base, tipped my twig stove out over it so there's loads of embers, and just built it like you would say you would if you come woke up in the morning and there's a fire. Like, you wanted a fire and there's a bed of embers, you just pile on a load of small kindling and then just blow on it and blow on it, and then bum, Bob's your uncle got a fire so i'm gonna sit here enjoy this little bit little fire enjoy my coffee and fag and i'll bring you back in a bit thank you for watching if you're still going let's do this just a little something this morning all right you don't always need tools to collect firewood because all these logs if i can show you I haven't used the tool to collect any of them, right? There's one, three of those big logs is from one tree that was led over, so I just pushed it slightly, it fell down, and then I had to get my saw to buck it up to, into length so I could carry it back because it was too big for me to carry. But other than that, like, generally, well, I could have carried it, but it would have been a bloody struggle just because of how long it was. It wasn't heavy, it was just really, really long. But, yeah, you don't always need tools to get firewood you just gotta look right it's one of those things i'll see you on a bit Right, we got a tray for our shavings. This is a stick of fat wood. This is my survival knife. It's quite a nice one. I reckon it is anyway. But I'm just gonna go to this part of my knife. Make 
loads of little fine shavings. Like that. And I just pop them off with my knife, with the actual blade under my knife. Yeah, try and get them all clumped up in the middle together if I can. That's what we're aiming for, loads of little bits like that. I'll get a load more of that and then I'll bring you back to the next part. A knife on uh, Isle of Wight Bushcraft. I'll leave a link below. But I like it because it's a safe method to a degree. It's sick, like if you're going to use a knife. Like this is the first time I ever did it. I only seen this Thursday. So, we're going to see how it goes. Alright, so I put my knife into a block. I got my ferro rod and my tray of goodies down there. And then we just... Oh, shit. Right, I've seen uh, Sean do it like that. I'm struggling. So I'm just going to do it the way that I normally do it. And to be honest, because I don't want to mess around, I'm just getting my striker, putting it straight in there. I got some shavings, some curls, and some resin, all, for, all red, like pine, so it's fat wood. And there we go. Well, I got a little bit quickly put on my knife and everything away. Grab you. Take that, try not to get fucking burnt. Get you in there. Move the twig stove. Set ye up. Can you see? Now you can. Get my first stage. And set him on there. Yeah. I'm going to work on that one that I was trying at first. With the knife. Just because it is a safer alternative, as you've seen, it did produce sparks. The knife I probably used could have had a better spine on it. But, hey, there we go. But, we got a fire going. I let you sit here and watch it climb a bit.
Now we're starting a lap up through. We'll get the next stage on. So next stage. And now we just go from there. Once we get a properly established fire, obviously I'm going to get some food on, probably get another brew on. And um, we'll just go from there and see how the day goes. Alright everyone. Time is half past 10am on the Saturday morning. I think it's Saturday. Yeah. But I have some bacon above a fire because I plan on doing uh, bacon cheeseburgers but I'm going to chuck in some wild edibles just to make it a bit more more appealing because yeah like a bacon cheeseburger doesn't really look any more appealing by itself mm. but yeah I got some primrose I collected yesterday uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of naval water around me. I'm not at 100% now, so I'm not going to pick it. Because it looks slightly different to what it's like in other areas I've been to. So I'm not 100% sure. I'll do a bit of research into that. But up behind me, there's a load of uh, goose grass and uh, nettles. I'm pretty sure I've seen some hawthorns dotted in and around there as well. So their shoots would be quite nice as well to be chucked in. So yeah, I'll go and have a little one look about, see what I can come up with, and I'll bring you back then. There wasn't actually a lot on the little walkabout that I did, to be honest. I wasn't expecting to find much in there. I've never actually been here before. This is the first time I've ever been to this location. But it went too bad. I got primrose here, which if I can pick up one of them, is a beautiful little yellow flower. Tastes really nice. I got some stinging nettles there. And then I got some. Get a bit there. Some goose grass, or aka like sticky buds, as you lot probably know them. But this and this will get boiled up, these will get washed. I'm gonna get my burger and everything on in a minute, and then we'll go from there. I'll bring you back in a minute. Here is my bacon cheeseburger with a wild edible salad on top don't it look pretty slow cooked bacon as well oh, it's gonna be lovely I got my burger with me where is it for shoes you my wild edibles in there I got another one off to the side going. That's first bite. Mmm. 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 Well, what can I say? Tastes absolutely bloody banging. All that is salad wise is goose grass, nettles, and uh. Fuck's sake, I forgot her name. The pretty yellow flowers I showed you earlier. Those ones. That's all that is in her. I know I literally told you like minutes ago what they were, but I've already forgot. If anyone actually knows me, you'll understand when I say I have a shite memory. Mmm. A wild edible bacon cheeseburger.
It's the way forward. You lot that spend your time in the city all your life, you do not know what you're missing out on. You really don't. Mm. Use lock, I don't have my cut, eh? Yeah, just goes to show when you're sat down quiet, you'd be surprised what will come down and pay you a visit. There is a little squirrel, like, literally less than four metres away from me. Because that tree it's sat on, is literally only about four meters away from me at the furthest point so yeah you'd be surprised what i'll come and pay you a visit but yeah i apologize about the shaky footage as you can see i'm literally I'm sat down in front of me fire doing that so that's quite nice if i'd have had my cutty i'd have had a squirrel on the fire and a new pouch to come in with but as I don't really know this wood, and I haven't got permission to hunt, I'm not willing to take that risk and get done for poaching. It's bad enough that I'm on this land without knowing exactly whose it is and everything else. But I'll leave no trace as usual. And I doubt anyone would have a problem even if they did know I was there. Because most people tend to be alright when they realise you leave no trace and you don't like it and mess and you've got to carry out other people's rubbish yourself. So they kind of understand where you come from. But yeah, that was quite cool. I was just sat here playing a game on my phone, heard a load of rustling, looked over and there's a little squirrel and I managed to get on video for you. Which I'm quite happy about to be honest. That was cool. That was cool. It was quite a fat squirrel to be honest as well, mind. We're out of breeding season, so it wouldn't be a pregnant one. Ain't a good eater, then. Alright, people. It is half past two. I'm packing up, and I'm going to start making a move back to mine. I'm running out of coffee, as simple as that. I'm running out of coffee. I've got enough for one cup left. I thought I had more, but I don't. But, yeah, I'm just going to pack up. Leave no trace as always. When I'm breaking down my fire and everything, I'll bring you back so you can see all of that. Leave no trace. See you in a minute. There's our fire pit. Obviously, these sticks here. These ones can just be pretty much just slung back out into the woodland. So you don't even get really noticed. But as there's longer materials uh, folded over and that, and I've got them over here. we got these bigger ones, this is all out, I dumped about 9 litres of water on this one together. But these ones, there's plenty of foliage there, but there's loads over there, you don't put it all in the same location, well I don't anyway. Um, that's where all this like ash, coal type stuff. I would advise you to wear gloves doing this, but I was stupid and packed them in my bag. They're about halfway down, so I'm not taking 50 litres out of a backpack just to get a pair of gloves when there's a string on you just wash my hands in. So I would just scrape this up. 
I set it there, no, I took this off and go, I disperse it. Come back, get another load. I don't normally do this because I normally do a pit fire, whereas last night it calls for a quick fire simply because it suddenly got cold. So now I'm going to disperse this as well. And I just keep doing this until it's fully done. There's a little bit of rubbish, I'll take that with me. Get as much of this as I can. Not only does this leave no trace, all these is basically nutrients for other plants, so spreading it out allows other plants to benefit from the nutrients that is left, if you get me. I'm just going to wash all the tripod and that off again. That tripod is quite a lot of water. Oh, that's oh, that lucky. I thought I'd done in the water there. I'd have been a gutter. So, yeah, now, obviously. It's got basically just big dirt dirt. So now, I don't know if you can see all this area, but this is debris that I kicked off of that area last night. Like make it so I just gently There's that bit of rubbish. And as you can see the fire pit is already starting to shrink. Like we're quite a fair bit. So I'll just carry on, get into more debris, just stuffing it over a bit, just to add to it. Get some more done. Rubbish, I'm going to put that in by my bag, and that's a pot in there.
bit too cheap going around here, it's a little bit harsh. Not enough to, we're picking up and look straight at it. Yeah, I've run out of space on my uh, memory card. But here, if we're at a little twig stick going on just covering it up. Once again, leave no trace. And as you can tell, my main fire was literally right in front of me. I had a little twig stove one to the side, and that is that. Leave no trace. It is not bloody hard. And as you can see, my hands ain't even that dirty after moving all the ashes and washed them and that. But doing covering it didn't get me that dirty. So leave no trace. Must most important thing to remember. Leave no trace. Right. Over there was my little paradise. I'm leaving. It's Saturday and it's half past three. God, I probably won't get back to Bristol till quite late then. No. Oh. Depending on how everything goes. Because yesterday I didn't know my route. But now I've been there once. I'll be able to navigate her a lot quicker and easier. So I'm hoping that's gonna be the case for when I get on the road. Right. Like, be able to find my way back a lot easier. But yeah. Alright, I'm on my way back out of D-Layer, I'm on road now, I'm out of the woods, and I'm heading towards Bristol. I've got miles to go. Absolute miles still. But, I'm looking forward to it. Enjoy a nice long walk, me. I'm going to try and avoid Death Alley if I can, because, yeah, I don't fancy running another one and a half miles, to be honest. Like, that fucking murked me. Like, and it's right at the beginning, and it'd be right pretty much at the beginning of the journey. So I'd be fucked. Like, seriously fucked. This is where I got... The primrose yesterday on my way down. But yeah, I'll bring you along a bit later. I'm gonna try and cover some distance. Right, I'm not religious in any type of way, but I'm about to enter what I called Death Alley yesterday because I nearly died more times then than went out on a fucking pub crawl for like three days. Like, holy shit. But, yeah. I fucking hope I get out on the other side nicely. I should, though. I don't see why I wouldn't. But anything could happen. So, here's my plea. If there is some fucking god, whether it be Jeebus, Juhamid, or whatever the fuck is Gandhi's name is, I hope the cunt's on my side on this one. Because I'm really looking forward to seeing my little boy. <laughs> so, I love you and leave you. Alright, I'm on the death alley strip or whatever the fuck it is. And when I say I am honestly shitting myself walking down this road, I am honestly shitting myself. Like, motorists are fucking it past me at most of them. It's like some of the nicer ones are slowing down. But, yeah. I am fucking shitting myself. Honestly shitting myself. I'm not afraid to admit that. I am actually fucking pooping my pants. Trying not to die. Trying to make as little progress as I can with each fucking moment. And not, to, and not die at the same time. Honestly, my heart is going 90 to a dozen. It's like I've got a fucking tarantula, man. Now, just to get to here. Right away. Cool. I can't afford to run at this time. Simply because i still got like another fucking six miles ahead. Like, to walk. 
Oh, this is bloody, this is like fucking torture. This is like being sat in a room full of fucking spiders for me. Fucking terrified of spiders. I don't know why or how or what even calls me to be terrified of them, but I just am. Um, oh, I'm fucking dying. I can't wait to get to the Oh, never made it there. I'll stop this attachment here, people. Right, sorry, people. This ain't my usual one. Ooh, flashy lights. You can tell I'm getting back to civilization, can't you? But basically, people. Uh, but it looks at as on response police. Hmm, summit's kicking off. But yeah. I'm sorry this wasn't like my usual videos. This one's a bit all over the place. But I've made it off of uh, the Death Valley stretch. Basically, in the end, I only made a mile of it and I nearly got killed a number of times. So I just forced myself through a bush. Well, I say bush, it is, it's a whore for a hedge. But I didn't really get that badly like cut up or like pricked or anything. But yeah, I managed to make it out into Whitchurch at some point, like somewhere along Whitchurch. I don't know exactly where. All I know is were, I'm in Whitchurch and that's because there was a sign back there saying, welcome to Whitchurch. I walked about, what? I walked about two miles. I ran about a mile, like including the uh, half a mile that I basically walked from thingy. So yeah, probably about three miles I've traveled so far today. People's looking at me weird because obviously they don't see people hiking with a phone recording. But yeah, anyway. Thank you for watching. If you're still going, uh, like, comment, subscribe, yada yada, you know the drill. And until next time, people, I love you and leave you and have a good one.